I mean, it's a big win. I mean, they played hard. They were ready to go. Coach Pearl had them ready to go. I thought their game plan was good early. They did a great job on Brandon. You know, but I, I thought we had different guys step up. I thought some of our younger guys, Jaden Bradley, played well tonight. Ryan Griffin was huge. He had some big shots. Had, had some free throws when we needed them to. I thought, you know, our guys showed some resilience to kind of weather a bad shooting game for Brandon and have some other guys step up. But the uh, timeout they called with six, whatever it was, to go in the game. When we started to make a run, they came out of the timeout. Amari took that charge. It was, it was one of the biggest plays of the game. So, you know, we've been on our guys make tough plays. We're going to have to make them on the road. Thought our guys stepped up and made some tough plays there late in the second half when we needed them. So, but I mean, we knew this was going to be a tough game. They're they're not an easy team to play. They're going to play hard. But our guys have been through some tough games. I mean, we've played Houston on the road. We played Arkansas on the road. Different different types of teams. Missouri on the road is a really good offensive team. But you know, it was a big rivalry game, and our guys stepped up and played well for us. Good. Yeah, I don't think it would. Have, I think we get booed whether we win, lose, or whatever. They're uh, they don't like Alabama very, very well. So, but yeah, it's a lot better to be booed than to have the court storm and have to try to figure out how to get off. So, I know it was their Super Bowl, and so it was nice to come win over here when it was. Uh, we got their best version. I feel like. Coach, when you have a, a slow day by Brandon, what, what what does that mean to have the bench come in and, and really step up, especially Ryland and that, you know, some of the other players that came up? With yeah, I mean, Ryland led us in scoring. I thought Namari played well. Namari didn't shoot it particularly well either, but he, he ended up leading us in the blue-collar points, and he made some effort plays. So, But he, even not necessarily even just the bench, but, you know, Jaden Bradley was big there when we made a run late, you know, to get the scoring out of him that we got was uh, good. And then Brandon found other ways to impact the game. I mean, he ends up being, you know, he's still in double figures at 13. He got to the old boards. He got, you know, that tip in that was uh, big late after he got burned on the back door. So, but yeah, R Ryland was huge. I mean, we don't win this game without Ryland. And, and I really felt like he did the best job defensively on Window Graham. And Window Green, he can go get buckets as good as anybody in the country can. So, and I thought he, he was hurting Sears and Jaden Bradley a little bit. So we went with some more size and put Rylan on him. He had that one block and we tried to send him downhill to our bigs a little more, but boy, he, he's good. I mean, he, he's, uh, he may be the best guard we've seen all year. He's really good. Great win last time for you guys uh, in Oklahoma when there's that just huge crowd, really raucous crowd. Um, what do you think was the biggest difference in terms of handling that intensity and just the, the noise? You know what? I don't know if the noise was the issue at Oklahoma as much as it was the mindset going in. I mean, we played at Houston. That didn't the noise didn't rattle us. I I don't feel like the noise is going to rattle any of our guys. I feel like it's what's our mindset going into the game. I, I feel like we didn't take Oklahoma as seriously as we needed to for whatever reason. That's why we didn't play as hard as we needed to. There's no way we weren't taking Auburn seriously. I mean, they're a really good team. You know, the biggest rivalry game. And, and they're competing for an SEC championship. I mean, I know they've now lost five of their last six, but they, they were right there, you know, a couple of weeks ago at the top of this league. So our guys came ready to go. We didn't do a great job in the first half with some stuff. I felt like some guys weren't as locked in on the defensive end. Not, maybe not the effort, but it was more executing the game plan as much as we needed to. I thought did a lot better job there, especially in the – last 10 minutes of the game. How difficult was Auburn's perimeter defense? It seemed like they were kind of forcing you in, and then I don't know when they touched that in the first half, but you didn't have a lot of three-point calls. No, we didn't. I mean, they were up into the ball, being super aggressive. They didn't, you know, we only got, we were 6-21 of 21 from three. I mean, they got more threes off than we did this game, but we, we did score in the paint uh, a lot more than double. You know, I think it was at 44 points for us, 20 for them. So we were able to get downhill with their aggressiveness. And with the way we spread the floor, but shoot, there, I mean, they played hard. That their physicality on Brandon, you know, probably affected him. You know, I think we turned the ball over more than we have here recently. I think a lot of that was due to them being up into us. But but it also did open the floor up a little bit. Jaden Bradley got downhill, you know, with how aggressive they were. Sears was able to get downhill some. Brandon was able to get down, finish at the rim 
saw them because they definitely were trying to run them off the line. So, you know, it they did a good job taking away what we're trying to do. But, you know, we I mean, we still only shot. We were three or four on our nine rim two. So we, we were 20 of 24 at the rim. So, like, they take away the threes. But when you shoot 83% at the rim, that's it's, it's pretty impressive. Off of that, the pacing felt like a tournament game, a lot of half court, late in the clock a lot. Um, did you like that you saw some maturity in your team that they can handle half court late in the clock and, and get a win on the Yeah, I think that was big that we were able to execute some sets late, you know, when it turns into a little bit more of a half court game. But I did feel like we didn't get out in the break. Now they did a good job now letting us out in the break. They, you know, you got to give them tons of credit. But I felt like when we did get out in the break, we were able to kind of close the lead that they had. And then the second half, when we opened it up, we were able to get some fast break points. But again, like in the first half, we just fouled so much. And they were living at the free throw. It's hard to play fast when the other teams at the free throw line all games. So we had to do a better job not fouling. When you recruited Brandon, it's no secret you would watch this game growing up. And a lot of the other guys, it's their first time playing. How proud are you of the guys, how they responded in a crowd like this? And I'm sure when you recruited them, you were talking about games like this. Yeah, I mean, we talk about our schedule in general that we're playing one of the best conferences in the country. We're playing, we feel like the toughest non-conference schedule in the country. So, you know, I feel like those other games prepared for this, but yeah, I mean, this is the big rivalry game. So, you know, Brandon came to a lot of Alabama football games. He understands the Iron Bowl rivalry in football. I mean, this is the equivalent to the Iron Bowl rivalry. It's just in basketball. So I think Brandon understood it. The guys that hadn't been involved in it yet, they should understand it after playing in the environment they played in today. I mean, it's great. It's what makes college basketball different than the NBA. I mean, you're not going to get this passion out of the fan base in an NBA game. Like, so I, I love the passion that their fans bring. I, hopefully our fans pack our arena out. Hopefully there's not one empty seat when they come back to Coleman and we have to play them at our place because I think that's what makes college basketball so great. Well, where, where, is, where, is, where is this brain? now in terms of winning in the SEC for teams to win at all of them. I mean, upper win here in Kentucky? Probably this year. I, I mean, I we don't we haven't played at Kentucky this year. And, it, you know, did they, did they end up winning against Georgia today or not? They lost. Georgia won. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, I, Kentucky's not easy to win at when they're good. You know, not to say that they're not good this year. They've just been a little inconsistent. But when they, when they're, when Kentucky's Kentucky and they got 23,000 or whatever in there, that's, but I'll say this the environment here with them right on the court and the students right there, I, this is as tough as, I mean, I think this is the toughest environment to play in. Arkansas is up there, but I'd probably put, you know, I, we haven't got a chance to play Kentucky. You know, when we were good two years ago, it was COVID and it wasn't a full, you know, so it was, we weren't as good last year and they were a lot better. But I mean, I got to play at Kentucky when they were really good. When I was an assistant at Buffalo, that wasn't easy. The, uh, but I, I'll put this here at Auburn up with anywhere else in the SEC, but it, it's a good environment. When, when defenses play Last one, to, to deny the pass and limit his touches, what's what's the answer offensively? Screen him free, or how, how do you do? Yeah, that? that's. I mean, we've had this in the past. You got to set screens to free him up, and then you got to use him as a, him as a screener too. So if, if they're not going to help off him, period, you start using him as a screener. Then you got to set some tough physical. I mean, if they're going to be super physical and grab and hold him, then you got to set tough physical screens to get him open too. Those are the two biggest ways.